Tisztelt Miniszter! Honorable Madam Minister, Chief Prosecutor, ladies and gentlemen, dear invitees, I'd like to very warmly welcome you on behalf of the management of the Ministry of Interior. As uh, a Minister of Interior, when I was asked to deliver a presentation about the birth of the new criminal code, I had to review why this code came to exist and why exactly now. And the answer was very simple. In 2010, following the elections, when the new government was formed, we looked at the most important event that would influence the future of Hungary. And when it comes to the influencing of that future, the public order and public security at the time gave us guidance. And if we look at this guidance, then we can see that in 2010, there were 248,000 criminal acts in Hungary. And then viol if we also count violations of the different regulations, well, we also had 201,000 of those. So we could see that we had criminal cases of approximately 620,000 that threatened public order, public security, and the day-to-day -day livelihood of citizens. And if we wanted uh, the government to have due acceptance in the future and have security and order in Hungary, then we certainly had to change the code. Here, we are talking about the criminal code itself, certain parts of the criminal code at a theoretical level. Please let me take a step back to take a broader view of this area, because indeed, uh, the government decision uh, was focusing on changing the criminal code, but we also considered other criteria. We looked at what crime prevention options we had. We renewed the Crime Prevention Council. And under the public employment scheme, we made sure that anyone who does not have the means to make a living, they cannot get a job on the market and they cannot look after their families. Well, we wanted to provide employment to those people through the public employment scheme. Uh, although in many cases, the police managed by me says that the suppression of crimes is the result of the wonderful work. But let's not forget that by introducing the public employment scheme, we manage to safeguard many people from having to acquire assets through an act of crime. And of course, uh, the modification of the Violation of Regulations Act and the Criminal Code and the due transition, transformation of the Criminal Code and the new wording of the new code all contributed to the maintenance of public order and public security and elevated them to a higher level than before. And that was, of course, essential uh, for uh, the organizational changes as well to take place and also for the completion of technical developments that would, at a later stage, ensure that uh, these targets could be achieved through the application of law to a higher standard than before. We also looked into the typical changes that were made to the criminal code, and we split the changes into two parts. First, we looked at the general rules that were changed uh, and had an impact, and later we also looked at which of the unique rules were defined or changed. As Madame Minister Varga also mentioned, it was the tightening of the criminal code that was the primary requirement, because we said that without making the provisions stricter, um, that we cannot reach public order and security. And here we actually focused on criminals who committed multiple crimes, 
and then we also introduce short as a, an alternative to short term prison sentences other means of punishment and we also aimed to improve security at sports events. Let's not forget that at that time, uh, hooligans put vehicles on fire, damaged uh, the underground uh, carriages and buses. And all of these events encouraged us to also impose a ban on those who committed such crimes at such events. We also clarified the longest duration of custodial sentences and out of everyday crimes. Uh, we also introduced a ban from driving, which actually impacted a lot of people in Hungary because even though not a lot of people drove uh, drugged up on public roads, many actually drink drived. And uh, that was to the detriment of people who actually drove in a sober way. And uh, we also broadened the scope of sanctioning crimes. And we also introduced remedial work and uh, cutting access to electronic means of communications. There was also a reverse burden of proof imposed, which had to demonstrate the lawful origin of assets. So the burden of proof fell not on the investigation authorities, but on the person who acquired, let's say, billions in assets from the social system while having ample means. And accordingly, we also introduced a mid-range to the potential range of sentences um, with due moderation, so the courts exercise due moderation because, of course, it's one thing to decide on new rules, but the ultimate responsibility goes to the courts. And uh, if there is due justification, they can and they should change those sentences. Uh, the changes also impacted some unique uh, rules. For example, we introduced concepts of uh, falsification of drugs, uh, people trafficking, forced labor. We unified those crimes. And we also uh, decided to tighten certain punishments. Uh, well, the merging of uh, sexual assault, rape, was also performed, and I'd like to mention bribery as well, because although it's not a crime that was created at that time, at that time the health system also aimed to uh, discontinue bribes, and as a result, on the 1st of January 2012, uh, bribery was also broadened in definition to the acceptance of tips in the health system. Money laundering was also redefined on the 1st of January 2021, uh, which actually also shows that in 2013, we didn't just introduce a new criminal code that was cast in stone, but uh, we also aim to reflect societal changes in the code as soon as possible. If the implementation of punishment against a certain crime uh, does not get uh, ingrained in society, then there is still an issue to be addressed. But we did not only tighten up the code, we lacked certain um, provisions in when it comes to child prostitution. Well, uh, prostitution activities by minors under the 
age of 18 were subject to criminal punishment, but we changed that because it became clear that those under the age of 18 are victims to such crimes, and they are not the parties who commit such crimes. And accordingly, at a later stage, we gave them the opportunity to look at these crimes as such. So uh, the question arose whether, indeed, those who don't fully understand the danger to society of their criminal acts can be seen as the parties committing the crime. Now we are talking of the criminal code, but we must also talk about criminal procedures. And the most important development here was that previously a covered gathering of information was not reflected in the criminal code. It, was a, it had a separate status, and sometimes it gave rise to an abuse of the law within the given government. We have seen that before, and those who are as old as I am even enjoy the consequences of such a situation. So I believe it was an extraordinary opportunity and an extraordinary result. The covered gathering of information uh, got regulated under the criminal law, which explained how information could be gathered and used and what it is that could be used. Um, another outstanding activity was to emphasize the possibility of avoiding the consequences of, of criminal acts. Well, at an early stage, of course, uh, people were focusing on avoiding a procedure and trying to find an agreement, which are two approaches that accelerate the process at a later stage. But for that, the acknowledgement of the crime is essential, and there are also limits imposed because when it comes to the statement of the fact and the, the legal classification of the crime, we cannot actually give any allowances. Uh, the state has the duty to act accordingly. There are other factors at play that make it easier to conduct the procedure, and the shift in emphasis uh, was also seen in new phenomena seen in society. I would highlight uh, legal statuses related to illegal migrations. There are two main areas here, people trafficking being the first. If we look at the statistics of people trafficking, we realize that we needed to and still need to find an answer to this issue. In the fir first nine months of the day, we actually arrested 1,800 people smugglers, which is excellent police performance. But on the other hand, if uh, you look at the numbers, uh, and I'm look at, looking at the deputy superintendent, it's a serious problem and burden on the criminal justice system. So we have 1,800 foreigners in Hungarian uh, custodial institutions due to people smuggling. and. Uh, when it comes to mandatory expulsion, we also looked at the opportunities and also confiscation of assets is the same. And these are new areas. And even Mr. Chemegi, well, Chemegi at the time couldn't say anything in his code about these crimes. So it's our duty to raise the opportunities that are currently regulated in Chapter 13 of the Criminal Act and to enable uh, the right organizational development as well. Uh, we set up an anti-cybercrime unit within the organization. And cybercrime was actually broken by the pandemic. And why is that? It's because uh, they actually exploited from certain beliefs and myths in human health. Some people promised to eliminate the COVID virus in uh, two days. 
uh, which was a kind of quackery or a very unique and specific type of fraud. They offered uh, different treatments, sometimes simply chalk powder. So here uh, we had these crimes emerging in cyber post purchasing habits, and we had to make decisions accordingly. Here it was very clear that in the first case, people committed the crimes by violating the rules of medical treatment. But in the second case, it was the change in purchasing habits that gave rise to these crimes, because people mostly purchased goods via the internet. And the ordering itself was regular. However, the delivery of the goods or the responsibility for delivering goods were not quite that regular. So in this period, the number of crimes increased enormously. But in our hopes, our quick response to this eliminated the problem. When it comes to developments that support the investigation process, that supported public law and order, I'd like to highlight uh, <clears throat> uh, the electronic system for home custody and uh, the IT developments that support that. Uh, and uh, the development of the expert and cost module and the remote hearing application was also a key development, which during the pandemic also ensured the operability of courts and the continuation of investigations. We managed to continue the criminal processes without face-to-face -face contacts. So what was the result of all of these developments? The result was that out of the 828,000 crimes, uh, in the first nine months of 2022, only 109,000 crimes, criminal acts were committed. So I think the sanctions introduced in the criminal code were successful, just as the measures that I just highlighted. If I wanted to summarize the results briefly, I would say that the introduction of the criminal code and the criminal procedures uh, speeded up the investigation process and increased the success rate of the investigation process. Thank you very much for your attention.